last video, we used RakeDB Create All and RakeDB Migrate to create our database and our schema file for the application. I wanted to go through a comprehensive list of some of the other database rake tasks that are available. And if you've never heard of a rake task, that's perfectly fine. It's something built into Ruby and then into Rails that let you create automatic things happening. So if you wanted to do something like uh, migrate the database like we just did, you could do rake db migrate. But rake tasks definitely are not limited to just database things. As we will see in a few videos in the future, uh, we're going to actually be able to create our own rake tasks. And so, uh, but since we went over two database ones, I wanted to give you a more of a comprehensive list. And so we'll go right down the line. Rake DB create creates a database for that current environment. So since we're in the development environment, then it would create our development database. I go with when I create a new application, I like to create all the different databases. It's uh, really just a habit. You could do one or the other, and for most cases, it won't really matter. Uh, DB drop is going to drop or delete the database for the current environment. Uh, DB drop all, as you could probably guess, it's going to drop it for all environments. This is if you're pretty much wanting to start over from scratch. Uh, DB migrate. This is one you're probably going to use more than all of the other ones. And this takes any changes or database migration. So anytime you need to change your database, like add a new column or add a new table or change a data type, you're going to have to run rake DB migrate in order to make that change available to the rest of the application. Uh, rake DB migrate up is going to run a specific migrate down is going to roll back to the previous migration. So that's if you made a mistake or you made a change, uh, something that you didn't want to do the database, you can roll it back. Uh, rake DB migrate status is going to show you any potential uh, migrations that are possibly due. Uh, DB rollback, this is going to do a full rollback to whatever the la latest migra uh, migration file is. I use this one every once in a while when I make a change that I don't like. Uh, DB forward would be if you need to move forward to uh, whatever the next version is. I very rarely will use that one. Uh, DB seed, this is a fun one. It, you, with Rails, you have the ability to create seed data. So you could create a bunch of records uh, and then run rake DB seed, and it'll actually create all those test records and load them into your application. So, and we're going to do this in a later episode. Rake DB schema load. This is going to take your schema file and mimic the database so that your schema file looks like that file. Uh, DB schema dump is going to do exactly what it sounds. It's going to drop it and delete it. Uh, rake DB setup and also uh, rake DB setup. It runs rake DB schema load and then rake db seed. So if you're wanting to essentially, especially if you're early on in your application, I'll do this quite a bit with a brand new application where I'm trying to test out different database models. I'll run rake db setup and it'll wipe everything out of the database. It will load up the current version of the schema and it'll run the seed file. And what that will do is essentially get rid of any maybe development changes or maybe some test data that I put in there that I no longer want in. Uh, this is one command that can do all that for you. Rick DB reset runs DB drop and DB setup. So reset will drop the database and then run everything again from scratch. Uh, rake db migrate redo. This does runs a few different commands. This is one I very rarely use. It's available to you, uh, but it will run a few different ones, such as uh, going down to the previous migration, and then it will do a rollback and a migrate. It's uh, it really is dependent on what you put in that migration file. Like I said, I've never really messed with that one. Uh, rake db migrate reset and that's going to run db drop create and migrate so as you can see you have a lot of different options available to you uh, the most common ones uh, rake db create and create all this is what i'll use every to start out every single application uh, then 
rake db migrate right here i run this uh, probably once a day or more than that depending on what type of development i'm doing for every database change that i need to do uh, db seed i'll run occasionally if i have a lot of seed data that i need to get in uh, rake db setup i'll do quite a bit especially early on in the application um, be careful, you, uh, this is something that uh, someone brought up in one of the uh, uh, in one of the other courses I did. Uh, I ran RakeDB setup on production because there was no live production data and uh, the uh, student didn't realize that that also wipes all the data in. So they didn't realize that that was part of it. So make sure that if you are running RakeDB setup, you are aware that you are gonna be wiping every Thing out of whatever environment you're using so uh, it's very helpful and it's a great tool to use I use it quite a bit myself uh, just make sure that you're aware that you uh, will be wiping out a data obviously if you're in a production environment and this is a live application you would never run a DB setup this is only for when, when you're kind of in the early stages of development or you're doing something locally so on your local machine there's times where I'll have a very uh, advanced application and I make a few changes and I need to wipe everything out of my local machine that's perfectly fine but you don't want to do that on production since uh, obviously you'd be wiping out ev everybody else's data too so these are the comprehensive list of rake DB tasks